In this video, we put SK Long Range Match 22LR ammo to the test. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Thank you for joining us, Travis. Hi, Gavin. Thanks for having me. This was a fun project. We've been working our way towards taking 22 long rifle out to essentially ELR distances. And in this video, we're doing exactly that. Now, it's not easy, is it? No, no, it's not. <laughs> Many of you know out there that the ELR 22 is really gaining in popularity. We've done some SK match ammo testing before. And, and standard plus. And standard yep. plus, and had really good success with that. Mm -hmm. So SK now has come out with the long range match. They've taken it a step further in their consistency of the ammo and it is working really well for and us. And that's critical because if you've shot 22 long rifle at distance, you'll see that the drop is just ridiculous, right? And so if you have yep. inconsistent velocity, that drop becomes very unpredictable. Yeah, vertical opens up, you get yep. your shot dispersion kind of tends to go all over the place. So the more consistency you can get with your ammunition, the more consistent you're gonna get on hitting the target. Yep. Question is, what is the starting point? In the center fire world, your starting point is pretty straightforward. You work up a load. When you like the load, you take your muzzle velocity, you plug that into a ballistic sap. You've got the G7BC of your bullet. I've had this accurate to within, say, inches at a thousand yards. Now in the rim fire world, not quite as simple. Yeah, things <laughs> just tend to fall apart. Um, <laughs> The, the 22 match bullets are mm -hmm. flying transonic out of the muzzle mm -hmm. all the way to the target. So they're not following the same computer modules that in the ballistics charts that the sonic bullets are for the center fire. Yeah. So what you're, what you're having to do is you're really having to true, your, true all your data up. You can get your muzzle velocity and you can shoot the gun, but you're, you're going to need to shoot them. What I've done in the past is I've shot at 50 yard intervals and mm -hmm. measured my point of aim to point of impact mm -hmm. to find my actual drop, recalculate it in to the ballistics data in whatever ballistics data you're using, the truing application on it. Mm -hmm. So you're combining all that data with real world data with what is actually happening to get an actual dope card, which is what we did with the on shoots here. Yeah, I've noticed the same thing. So I plugged data for, I think it was SK standard into my ballistics app and I was attempting to shoot rock chucks at 200 yards and I was missing. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, I had data out to 100, like how, how different could it be? Well, here in the canyon where we're shooting, there's a ton of different variables. Right. You know, you were shooting out at the gun club, you were shooting here, things definitely change. Yes. And each configuration that you're going to go through, you're going to want to validate that data. So one of the things that we're hoping to do is to set up 50 yard increment ranges. We have all sorts of distances that we can shoot at here yep. at the Ultimate Reloader Ranch. But if we can get 0, 50, 100, 150, and 200 as a starting point, that uh, will tell us you know, is the data that we see, like the data supplied by the manufacturer, something that we can go with or do we need to create a custom model for that, a true you know, ballistics, right. uh, ballistics app uh, dope card kind of a thing. So uh, what we've got for this story, you've seen the B14R, the Bergara. We had that in the original stock when we did the unboxing video here. It's in the XLR Element Magnesium 4.0 chassis, totally killer setup. This is the Onshoots 1710 competition. We thought it'd be good to test this ammunition with two different rifles to see what kind of data we would get. Right, and the data you'll notice, look at our charts on there. We're looking at an 18 inch barrel versus a 16 inch barrel too, so you're gonna get two different velocities. Okay, so let's look at that velocity data next. Velocity is critical with this kind of shooting scenario. So what we wanted to do was take some of the data that I had generated during the unboxing video for the B14R and compare that to the data that we collected with the SK long range match. So from that original story, out of the B14R with its 16 inch barrel, for SK standard plus, we had an average velocity of 1098.4 and an SD of 12.8. For the SK match out of the B14R, we had an average velocity of 1095 with an SD of 13.5. So you can see those two different SKUs of ammo shoot about the same overall you're probably going to see more consistency 
with SK Match. It's a higher level skew, skew held to a higher level of scrutiny. Right. Well, but then we take that one, one other step and yeah. we go to the long range match that SK's provided here. Out of the B14R, check this out, we got 1101.6 with a standard deviation of eight. We're down to a single digit now. Yeah. So with the on shoots, the same SK long range match was 1085.2 and still single digit 8.7 standard deviation, which this is where long range, you get that shot dispersion, vertical dispersion collapsed. is collapsed down, yep. more consistency, more hits on target. It's great to measure data and to see that data basically corroborate what we're expecting to see. This is supposed to be more consistent ammunition, and in and our it, testing, it, it definitely is. Yeah. Now, how about, speaking of consistency, how about the grouping? This is the first 50-yard group out of this rifle with that ammo, and I was like, dang, this is fun. That's, you gotta love that when you see good results from the get-go. Yeah. Okay, but the real goal was to push things out to distance, so let's talk about that next. All right, so the real test. Can we reach some steel at 400 yards? We look at the drop data and I was figuring, oh, let's try and do five or six, but it really tends to fall on its face. I wanted to do something a little bit more realistic and mm -hmm. approachable to begin mm -hmm. with. So 400 yards it is. We do have targets in steel at 400 yards out here. And we set up on the grass next to the cabin. Gavin was there on the spotter with the drone spotter. Yep. Yeah, it's better than a regular spotter. Yeah. <laughs> Alarm and going off the whole time because it was too close to the target. Yeah, ah, it's all good. <laughs> and it was a really warm day in the afternoon. Sun was shining. Go and take my first shots on the target. And my first shot, I was way over the target. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And Kevin's like, oh, where'd, you, where'd it go? And I'm like, I'm way over. And I'm looking at my drop chart that I had and I'm trying to figure out what I did. And then I realized, and this is where you have to look at your, your environmentals around you. Mm -hmm. We're shooting uphill on a warm summer day and the updraft was massive that day. Mm -hmm. My updraft was getting me three and a half mils over the target. That's Insane. how much it was pulling that little bullet up. Yeah. So since I was lucky enough to see the impact, quickly adjusted the scope a little bit and we were on target yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, and what, what surprised me was I think you had seven successive impacts on the larger target. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's really awesome. Huh. And then at least two on that tiny little target. Yeah. You know, th th that target's kind of hard to hit with a centerfire yeah. rifle. It was pretty fun. Um, but SK Long Range Match, I really think due to the consistency of it, mm -hmm. it really makes you effective on hitting those targets. Yeah, if you're gonna attempt something like that with like the, you know, bottom shelf ammo, you're gonna have a lot more variation in your velocity. We've seen, I think I've seen an SD of like 40 on, on really bad yeah. rimfire ammo. And you think about what that's gonna do with that vertical window yeah. of what your expected impact is. So definitely good results with the ammo, but we have something else to talk about before we conclude, and that's more scientific data. So what was fun about this story is we took our rimfire evaluation kind of to the next level by gathering a bit more data. Rim thickness consistency and weight consistency cartridge to cartridge. So Travis took 10 different cartridges. We ran them with a dial indicator on a gauge to figure out what the rim thickness was gonna be and how consistent it was gonna be. The average rim thickness was 46 thousandths of an inch with a standard deviation of one thousandth of an inch and an extreme spread of two thousandths of an inch. Pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I took those same 10 cartridges <laughs> and I took the cartridge weight. The average of cartridge, loaded cartridge, was 51.511 grains. The SD was 0.127 and the ES was 0.370. I thought this was pretty good to have basically a little over a tenth of a grain SD on the very screen for the entire cartridge. The entire cartridge weighs as much as a 223 bullet. So, <laughs> and you might ask, well, why did you guys measure the entire cartridge? Mm -hmm. When they're making the 22 long rifle cartridges, 
there's many factors that go into that. One of the things is the priming compound, and they say the priming compound can affect the velocity and the consistency. So if we weigh the entire cartridge, we're going to get an overall idea mm -hmm. of the consistency of the entire cartridge, which includes that priming cartridge, the priming compound, and the powder, the charge, powder charge, consistency and of then the, the case. bullet. Yeah, you know, so so you get an overall picture of the entire component, not just mm -hmm. not just the bullet. I considered pulling the bullets and looking at them, but I I do want to look at the entire entire yeah, product. Absolutely. And this is the first time that we've collected this data in house. So we're in the process of comparing that to other sources of data we found on the internet. And then in future stories we're going to be doing these tests. Yep. And if there's something that we missed, drop a comment and we'll add that to the suggestion box for for this type of story. So in conclusion, this ammo did what we thought it was going to do. Yep. One of the things I'd like to know in the comment section mm -hmm. is I want to know from all the viewers there, what are you doing to reach these long distances? Yeah. Do you have a Charlie tack on? What kind of rings are you running? What kind of base are you having? What, what are you doing to get these further distances? Because there's so many variables out there and so many mm -hmm. different ways to do it. Yep. So we want to hear from you guys what you're doing. We have a, we have a 20 MOA base here. We have adjustable rings. Yeah. But what are you doing? Yeah, it gets, it gets really extreme, and when you're getting out to those extremes, you have to have pretty extreme setups and gear. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I can't wait to try more of this myself. You know, there's a lot of things for us here to look at. Rimfire is really cool. We're hoping to look at Benchrest this coming year. You know, that'll be a great platform to look at the accuracy of, of the ammunition itself. I got to shoot a Benchrest rifle at the Anschutz facility underground thing was amazing. I shot the tightest group I've ever shot with rimfire ammo. Yep. Totally cool stuff. We had fun with this story. If you have other ideas, both for the testing and for rimfire type stories that you'd like to see, drop a comment and we'll again add that to the suggestion box. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.